All right, so we are here at the West Hills Mall, and guess what? We are, we are hanging out with a man who everybody calls Agu Papa. I know that's what you call him as well. If you've watched the movie Beast of No Nation, you'll be very familiar with this face. And this is the man that played Abraham Atta's daddy. He's actually called Kobna Emisa Sam. You're like, where did he come from? Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, we just woke up one day. There was a movie, Beast of No Nation. Then we saw you yeah. playing Agu's daddy, Abraham Atta's yeah. daddy. And we were like, okay, where did this man come from? Where did you come from? I've been around. I mean, uh, I haven't been in the movie industry though, but I've been around. Um, I love the art, but I was just waiting for the right opportunity, you know. Okay, so it means that this project, if, if, I, if I can say, this project is your first project? This is not my first project. Okay. My first project was titled Kweba. Uh, we premiered it somewhere 2012. Um, I think Multimedia even sponsored it or so. so. Uh, that was my first movie. That was a movie we shot in Winneba. Okay. And I was the main character in that movie. It's a fancy movie. And the setup was in 83. Mm. Yeah, and it also featured David Donto, KKD. I think that was the first movie KKD ever did. Oh, I see. And it's called what? Kweba. Kweba. Yes. Okay, it was a fancy movie. It was a fancy movie. Mm. So. Shots where? Uh, in Winneba. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I think after that one, I hadn't done any movie to Beast of No Nation. To Beast of No Nation. And that's the biggest for you, you know. That's what, yeah. you know, got a lot of people talking yeah. about you. How did you come by this one? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. I, I, I say it's divine intervention or it's God's doing. Mm. Um, I was actually going to take a small boy for audition to be part of the child soldiers. And when I got there, I was given the opportunity to also audition for the father role. And I did. And before then, people had already come for audition. And I think the audition was even about to end. They had already even chosen somebody. So I just took a shot of it, did the audition. I was shortlisted. And behold, <laughs> the director decided to use me rather. So, I see. So if you say people, people, people had come for audition, are the familiar faces, are people we know, are the people in the industry who came for that audition as well? Our movie industry, a lot of them came. The popular ones that you know, they came. Oh, just give me. Even advice. some from Nigeria came. Are you serious? I'm telling you. Mm. Um, at least I know uh, Jumai was supposed to, to be on it. Yeah, and then uh, I think what helped me also was the tree. I was able to express myself no, well but in the of course, tree. of course, if local actors came, it means that they also could speak tree. I know John Jumelo went on the audition. Uh -huh. I know uh, well. a couple of guys. I'm... Mm, I see. So life has been good after Beast of No Nation. A lot of yeah. things have happened. A lot of good, good things, you yeah. know. But before we talk about the good things, that how much did you make from that movie? Uh, we made, I would say, God blessed us. So, oh, let's no, take no, it no, out. Like, okay. <laughs> Don't tell me how much, you know, like say 2,000, 1,000, but tell me I, it was between 1,000 and 1,500, 2,000, or like 15,000, you know? <laughs> I wish it was 50,000, uh -huh. but uh, I mean, it was good. Like, yeah, I mean, between uh, say 1,500 to 3,000. I see. And so after this production, you know, and because you say you had a one before this one, there's, I'm sure there's a huge difference between what you did first. There's a vast difference. I mean, um, the first one that I did wasn't bad, considering the fact that it was a Ghanaian production. I mean, um, the producer, uh, even on Hinijan, she, they call him she, they call him she in the, uh, what they call the music industry. Uh, she was the producer. I think. She did well, I mean, in terms of um, location, in terms of accommodation, feeding, the payment wasn't bad. It was okay, she did well. But with this one, I mean, it's a big budget. Um, even though we were hoping, you know, they could have, you know, still do better. But I mean, it's okay, it's better than most of the Ghanaian production. Mm -hmm. I, apart from that, it's not even about the money. Sometimes it's about the opportunity you get to learn from that particular set. And there was a lot of things that, you know, Learn because myself, I want to go into movie producing. I want to produce movies myself, so I learned a lot. You learned a lot. One, one, in terms of the way these productions are handled, these two oh, foreign okay. production um, and the local production, what are we missing? What are we not getting right? What should we work on? I think I always tell people that Beast of No Nation is not really an extraordinary movie that a Ghanaian producer may not be able to produce. But then, it all boils down to you no know, financing. And uh, because it's big budget, and uh, getting the right equipment, getting the right people to support the production, and our 
producers, I don't know what to say, but they like basing all their productions in Accra yeah. or Kumasi. Let's explore. We have a lot of places, a lot of locations in Ghana. Visa of No Nation was shot in four locations in Ghana. When, when? Kufodria, Ekupon, a bit of Elmena, and Axim. So if we could put together, producers can come together. One, two, three producers can come together. Solicit for fans, get like four million dollars, come and shoot a movie. Where do we get those Belgian money? This of the they use like four to five million dollars to shoot them. So if these producers are going to put themselves together and then come out with some good script, they'll get the funding from there. And then you shoot something big that will just project us. I mean, they should just stop about, they should just stop this. Uh, I'm producing my own movie, premiere it, and that's it. There are two stories. Kwame Kuma stories are there. Konfanochi stories are there. Yasantua stories are there. I mean, JB Danquist. All the history we have there. You can put something together. You just put something. But they say props. You know, if you want to shoot a Kuma movie, you have to look for a car Kuma was driving in 1957. We don't have that car now. So how do, how will we make it happen? Yeah, so now we are using a lot of um, computer works. Most of these old school cars are computer generated. If you watch this new movie, Deadpool, that they premiered in Accra more recently, it's a new movie. Even the cars that they are using, high speed car chasing around, is just computer generated. See, with the right production, they can create those things for you. And if you write a good story, I'm telling you, they can bring in like 20 million dollars for you to shoot a movie. And you keep saying they, 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 they. Who are they? Yeah, the Hollywood the producers there. They are ready to invest. People are ready to invest. Bees of Donation Nation had Ghanaian producers on it. Was it a Ghanaian script? It was a Nigerian book. It's a story that somebody had already written. I think a Nigerian. A novel? Yes, something mm. like that. It was a book. So... You know, do you know who wrote it? Yeah. I, I, the name has escaped me a little. But I know the person. Um, he was here during the premiere. Mm. Yeah, the Nigerian was here. So it was Kari Fugunaga who took the story and then turn it into a script that was a screenplay so he, he turned it to suit the way he wants it so that is it I mean there are a lot of stories that you can take and then turn it into script now I have watched the movie I've watched it with a few friends so, uh, mm, yes beast of no nation but I don't get the storyline I don't like how it ended have you also had people telling you that a lot mm. a lot um, you know, these people sometimes they do some of these movies, they leave it that way, somebody can continue it, you know. But with the story, yes, of course, a lot of people were like, yeah, it's, it's good, but I didn't really get it. It's there. Um, people too, I know somebody who's, who keep telling me, who keep testing me on Facebook. Charlie, I'm watching your movie, this is the fifth time I'm watching it. Mm. Yes, people are just fascinated about the way it was shot in Ghana with all the bombs and guns and the military, whatever, all those things. People are just fascinated about it, so they keep watching it. Let's quickly talk about Striker. You know, people think actually the Striker is dumb. No. He talks? Yeah, a lot. He was lucky like the other boys, you know, he was picked, uh, he was picked I think, uh, with his physique and the way he looks. Uh, was he also playing football while he, no, when no, he was No, 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 mm. they, they were uh, at the, uh, what do you call the Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, oh, so okay. That's, oh, yeah, in Accra. Yeah, Accra. Yeah, in Accra. Um, so, what was it called? Agogloshi area. Yeah, area. When they went scouting, fortunately, they found him there. I don't know if you've heard the review. Some people say that Striker should have been the man of Beast of No Nation. Yes, you can love him all you want, but the movie is on one boy, Agu. Mm. And Agu is Ibamata. Mm. That is a movie. No, the kid did well. He suffered. He's, I mean, he was... Every day he was on set for like three months. Okay, even even Idris Abba is not the main character for the movie. Oh, okay. Idris Abba is a supporting character to Ibramata. So we heard people saying, "You people are not treating striker, or you people are not treating treating striker, or you are not taking." I'm saying that no. I mean, we don't want to conflict things. Um, the story is on Abraham. Let Abraham go and take his shine. There's a lot of things coming up for. Striker and co. And they haven't been deserted. I mean, they have really been taken care of. They're not lacking now, as before. So okay. everything is cool for them. He's in school? Yes. And he has never been in school before. But after the production, they feel that they have to put him in school. Um, I don't think it's Netflix that is taking Abraham away. It's the producer who feels like he wants to help the kids. So he's taking care of them, three of them. Abraham, Striker, and there's one other boy. I mean, they, they felt that why would you leave them to go back on the street when the movie is shining somewhere, mm. 
So where is your, your, your star striker and people go and find him on the streets? So it means nice. striker was on the streets. Abraham said he wasn't on the streets. He Abraham wasn't. Was on the street. So striker was on the streets. And then they picked him from it. So yeah. because they don't want him to go back to the streets, yes. they decided to put him in school. Yes, and then, you know, so that he'll, he'll, he'll grow confident uh, and then try and take the acting career, you know, as a profession. So he's been trained. We are training them, you know. We are looking for opportunities for them, you know, to, to get into movies again. Then very soon, all of you won't add local movies anymore it's because the agency will be taking you to Hollywood. Hollywood is good. But when we come home and you have a good production, we'll do it. When you come home and you have a good production, you do it. All right, so that's it. Uh, we hanged out with the man, Kabina Amy Sasam. Yeah. That's his real name. Yeah. He played Agu's dad. Do you know, you, know, you didn't have a name. Did you have a name in the movie? No, no, it's just the father. So, Agu's father. That was his name in yeah. Beast of No Nation. Mm -hmm. And he's so proud of Abraham. <laughs> we are proud of him as well. Yeah. And he will get a striker. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> I'll do my best, my All very right. best. He'll do his very best to get a striker. So from the rest of the small, we say bye-bye.